subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello, I'm DK Singh. In this episode of Politically Correct, uh, let me start my uh, start it with the senior Congress leader Anand Sharma's uh, tweet that he posted uh, yesterday afternoon. It was a very interesting tweet where he is questioning the party's alliance with the Indian Secular Front of Abbas Siddiqui. You know, last month Abbas Siddiqui of Fulfura Sharif uh, in West Bengal, he had floated this uh, political party. Now, it has uh, gone into an alliance with the left parties and the Congress, although its seat sharing talks with the Congress are not conclusive yet. But yesterday, all these three parties had a joint rally in, uh, in, in Kolkata. And after this, a day after that, Anand Sarma's tweet comes. So he is saying, basically, that, you know, ISF, the, the Congress Party's alliance with ISF is against its ideology, Gandhism, and Nehruvian secularism. The Congress cannot be selective in its fight against communalism. The presence of West Bengal Congress Committee Chief, that is Adhir Rana Chaudhary, in yesterday, in uh, Sunday's rally in Kolkata, was shameful. Very strong word, actually. Anand Sharma happens to be a member of uh, the G23. Now, we all know what G23 is all about. It's a group of 23 Congress, senior Congress leaders who had written to Sonia Gandhi last August, expressing concern about the state of affairs in the party, how it was on a constant downslide, and how the party needed a full-time president, and also elections to the Congress Working Committee and the Central Election Committee. Why is Anand Sharma saying this and now? And especially when, look, his tweet came just a day after this Jammu meeting of uh, some of those G23 members, where Gulam Nabi Azad praised the Prime Minister, and where, where other G23 members actually talked about how the party was getting weakened. So obviously battle lines are getting drawn between the G23 or the dissenters and the Gandhi family. Which, which way is it heading? How will the stalemate end? So in this episode, I'm going to discuss how the coming assembly elections will have a strong bearing on how this stalemate ends. But before that, let me uh, recount to you one story that Jawaharlal Nehru had uh, recounted to his daughter Indira Gandhi way back in 1930 in a letter that he had written to her from uh, his prison cell. He was talking about uh, a story that Chinese traveler Haiyan Sang had mentioned in one of his books. The story was about a person from South India who had gone to uh, what was then Karn, Karn Suvarna. That's somewhere near modern day Bhagalpur in Bihar. So that person, while he was moving around in Karnsuvarna, he was having copper plates around his waist and a torch attached to his head. So when people asked him about his strange get-up, he told them that, look, I'm so full of wisdom that my belly would burst if I don't wear these plates. And I wear this torch because I'm moved with pity about the people who are so ignorant all around me. So actually I have to show them this torch or, or this uh, light of wisdom in their darkness, in their ignorance. Now, Nehru sa says in the letter that, look, I am not so wise and so I am not going to deliver you a sermon, he tells his daughter. And then he goes on and talks about different things. Why I am recounting this story in this episode is, today, the Gandhi family looks like that person with those copper plates, or probably now you can call them titanium plates, which this family is wearing now. And this torch, that this family knows everything. It does not need any advice from any Congress leaders or workers. It will do what it wants, doesn't need any advice. It is in this context that we should look at this tug of war between a section of Congress leaders and they are very senior Congress leaders. We have somebody like former Haryana Chief Minister Bhupinder Singh Hooda, you have uh, former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister and Union Minister Gulam Nabi Azad, you have former Union Minister Anand Sarma, you have MPs like Sasi Tharoor, Manish, Manish Tiwari. 
seasoned Congress veterans, seasoned leaders, Congress veterans who have been in the party for decades. Now they have asked, started questioning the way the party is being led and the way the Congress High Command has responded. So last time the Congress Working Committee met a uh, couple of months back, in fact last month only, it was finally decided that okay we will be holding the Congress President's election in June. So it's not like there will be a formal election, like you know how they do, they will just nominate everybody says okay okay Rahul Gandhi and everybody accepts. So whether it will be Rahul Gandhi or not Congress has not officially clarified but in June they are going to have a full term Congress President, at least that was what was discussed in CWC. But the Gandhi family is still non-committal on, on holding election to the Congress Working Committee and the Central Election Committee. But before I come to that, let me talk about the options before the Gandhi family and before the G23. As we are seeing that daggers are drawn, there are, just, there are three options before the Gandhi family. One option is to accept the demands of the G23 and act on their recommendations. But the Gandhi family cannot do that because it will completely uh, end their supremacy. Suppose you have elections to Congress Working Committee. Now Congress Working Committee is the highest executive authority of the party, apex decision making body. The way it's constituted as per the Congress constitution, CWC has 25 members including the one is the Congress president and there is uh, the leader of the Congress in parliament. Then you have 12 members who are to be elected and 11 members who will be nominated by the Congress president. But if you have 12 members who are elected in the apex decision making body, you know, elected people will have their own say about things. You cannot just dismiss them. So as CWC meetings happen today, the Congress President says something and everybody starts clapping and praising the Congress President and the Gandhi family and meeting gets over. So even before the meeting starts, in fact, Gandhi family loyalists have already drawn up the statement in the sense like what is to be said after the meeting. That's about CWC and that's why they want elections. Then you have Central Election Committee. Now CEC of the Congress decides the candidates in Assembly and Lok Sabha elections. Now if you have elected CEC members, obviously the Gandhi family won't be able to pick and choose. At least people who are elected will have some say in the decision making. So that's where Gandhi family's authority will get compromised. And that is why the family is not ready to accept these demands. So the first option I talked about, that the family accepts these demands, looks very unlikely and given the way the family has responded. The second option for the family is to expel these people because they have been speaking or they have been questioning the Gandhi family. But these people so far have not done anything that can be interpreted as anti-party activities because they have raised the issue through a letter. Uh, they are talking about full-time president elections to the serial and CEC. These are not anti-party activities. Of course, if the Gandhi family had that moral authority and Gandhi family can do anything, it can expel any, anything, but it's not the same Congress as it was say six, seven, six years ago, seven years ago. Because within the Congress, even if you have just 23 people questioning, there are thousands and lakhs others who actually agree to what these people are saying in their letter. That the, Congress, the functioning of the Congress has to change. So if, if, even if they are not questioning the Gandhi family's leadership, they are questioning the leadership style or leadership's functioning. And that's the peeve. So what happens here? You expel them and you will have virtual, you know, you, you will be opening a can of worms because it's not just Huda, it's not just your Haryana because there are many leaders from across. You have former Master Chief Minister Prithviraj Chavan who is uh, part of G23. You have Gulam Nabi Azad, you have Huda, you have many senior leaders, many MPs. You can do especially when they have the tacit support of many other senior leaders who share their views. So you can do that. What's the third option? Third option is to reach a middle ground. But so far what we have seen going by the attitude of the Gandhi family, it's not ready to compromise. Okay, fine, you want a full-time president, 
probably will bring back Rahul, which, which is the most likely uh, thing that is going to happen. So Rahul comes back as Congress president. But beyond that, nothing. Here we have talked about the options of the Gandhi field. What are the options before the G23? Now, you know, the way things happen in uh, the high commandist Congress, once you have started questioning the party leadership, questioning the Gandhi family, you know, all your avenues and future avenues are kind of closed. You have seen what happened to Gulam Nabi Azad, he was leader of the opposition in the Ras Sabha. He was not renominated. And then he, there are very clear signals that he will not get any party responsibility also because he was the one who was handling, uh, you know, seat sharing negotiations in uh, Tamil Nadu. For long he, has been, he had been doing that. He had very good equations with, D, with the DMK. But this time the Congress had chosen Umen Chandi, it had chosen Sandeep Singh Surjewala, who is close to Rahul Gandhi, to negotiate with the DMK. So, Azad is virtually out. So, these things are very clear before G23 and others also, that once you have raised your voice against the Gandhi family, even indirectly, rest assured is not going to get much in future. So, that option is closed. I mean, you cannot back out also. Because once you have raised this banner of perceived revolt, you are in there. So these people have only two options. Either you run away and get shot in the back, or you take your fight to a logical conclusion at the risk of getting shot, shot in the chest. Why I am getting uh, assembly elections uh, into all this uh, debate? What you have seen is Rahul Gandhi is very active in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. In Kerala, because every five years you see the government changing. So there is a very good chance that the Congress-led uh, UDF may come to power. I am saying may because uh, the recent opinion polls have shown that probably LDF is retaining power. So we don't know. But then that's the best chance the Congress has got because in Assam, Congress is looking completely rudderless after Thorun, Thorun Gogoi. It doesn't, you don't see, see the Congress in the fight. In West Bengal, you are a minor player. In Tamil Nadu, well, you are riding piggyback on the DMK. Although you see Rahul so active in Tamil Nadu that you feel like, well, Congress is contesting on all 34 seats, which is not a fact. Congress is a very, very minor player in Tamil Nadu. But what Rahul Gandhi is doing is, he is in the states, or he is most active in the states, where the Congress has a chance of winning or being part of the government, say in Tamil Nadu. He went to Assam once, addressed a rally, that's about it. He may uh, basically make a couple of more guest appearances in Assam, probably sometime in West Bengal also, but his entire focus is on Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Yeah. So on the 2nd of May, if the Congress uh, puts up a good performance and wins, wins in Kerala and probably some, uh, some, you know, something to show in Tamil Nadu also, Rahul Gandhi will be created with that result and in June you will see him back as the Congress President and after that the G23 will have only two options, either fall in line or get expelled from the party or look for something outside the party if you want to form your own group fine even if there is a split in the congress probably the high command may not be bothered because the gandhi family thinks it is bigger than the congress but if the results are adverse well we may the moral authority of the family will be gone and then they may have to bide their time and in the meantime make some more compromises with the g23 that's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thank you.